Welcome back to the 411 Mania YouTube channel here with some reaction to AEW All Out. Uh, everyone's having fun. Everyone's talking about this pay-per-view. I've even got my Manscaped shirt on. Uh, everyone's having a good time right now. And uh, you can't blame them because AEW All Out was a hell of a pay-per-view. And it has already begun the question, is All Out one of the greatest pay-per-views of all time? Always going to be a subjective question when it comes to wrestling fans. Um, perhaps, you know, you liked one pay-per-view more than the other. You may have liked something better than someone else. That may make it better in your mind. Uh, someone else may think differently. Always subjective, right? Like the what the, the gold standard is still, for a lot of people, WrestleMania 17. Uh, however, if you look at Cage Match, which I know a lot of wrestling fans like to look at, AW All Out has already moved ahead of WrestleMania 17 in terms of ratings on there. It's ahead of that. It's ahead of, I think, NXT TakeOver New Orleans. Uh, it's ahead of Money in the Bank 2011, which ironically uh, featured CM Punk and John Cena in that one. Um, it is uh, getting a lot of praise, and rightfully so. And that's where I think if you're, you're asking the question, is this one of the greatest pay-per-views of all time? The answer is is going to depend on you know what you think in your own mind versus being able to actually clearly define what is the greatest pay-per-view ever. Again, even if some people, you know, like myself, probably still look at WrestleMania 17 and think that that is the one I have always considered the best ever, um, there's a lot of reasons for that. It's because that was, for me, the era that really, you know, defined a lot of things in wrestling. And so... I thought, you know, on that card in particular, from top to bottom, you, everything, a lot of things delivered on their promises going in. But this is where I think maybe the better question is, if you are putting AEW All Out in the category of one of the best pay-per-views in history, I think the better question is not necessarily, is it one of the best pay-per-views ever? Because that criteria for best is going to be different for different people. But maybe the better question is, did AEW All Out, in the, in the history of professional wrestling, is it one of the best at delivering on its promises from top to bottom? If that is the question, I think absolutely 100% yes. Like it has to be put in that category. And look, recency bias, like all that stuff will always come into these questions, but we like to have fun with it. And this is why we have these discussions is you do have something you can compare it to in the past no, the viewership, no, the buy rates, all that are not at the level of, again, what they were for WrestleMania 17 or anything like that uh, in that particular era, the Attitude Era. We, we, we've we discussed that ad nauseum at this point uh, about the comparisons and everything. But if you look at it just from an AEW All Out standpoint and you say, did this pay-per-view deliver everything going in that you thought that it set out to deliver? I think that answer is yes. Um, there is probably, what, one match on the card that most people probably look at and say, well, that wasn't the greatest match. Um, and not every match was five stars or anything, but the QT Marshall, Paul White one was not going to ever be a classic, but it served its purpose in terms of where it was at on the card. It didn't last long. There was not a lot to it. You got going in pretty much what you thought you were going to get from it. Everything else on the card the exact same, like all the matches I thought pretty much delivered their goal going in. Like they came out on the right side on their promises of what they were going to deliver. And oh, by the way, then you got four significant, you know, debuts on this show. Uh, of course, the, the bigger ones we're going to talk about in a second. But, you know, you had Ruby Soho here make her debut. And we're going to talk about more in another her in another reaction video based on kind of what that means and why I thought it was the right move for them to have her win this Casino Battle Royal. Monroe Suzuki shows up on AEW pay-per-view. Uh, just an incredible sight for him and Moxley to be in there, um, you know, just decking each other, and now they're going to have a match. But then the big ones, you knew there were teases of Brian Danielson uh, potentially showing up at this pay-per-view. He does, but so does Adam Cole. And I think there was a lot more uncertainty with Adam Cole and what his next move was going to be. But not only do you bring these two out uh, and deliver on a lot of the buzz and a lot of the rumors, which, as we always say, 
If you don't hear a wrestling company come out and deny it completely, especially AEW, I think they usually get a pretty hard yes or maybe a hard no sometimes. Probably not the hard yes because they like to leave that little uh, tease in there. If you don't get a flat-out denial, <laughs> there's a good chance it could happen. Uh, and I think that's what fans got with Brian Danielson. Although with Adam Cole, I just don't think it was something that we necessarily uh, expected uh, to happen. Perhaps, now you could have read some reports going in, uh, and that going into the day, there were some rumors that, you know, he was expected to go to AW at some point, but maybe not necessarily as soon as All Out. But that happened. You bring both of those goes out, those guys out in the same segment, and you get a buzz to end that show that's just on another level, and you delivered exactly what fans wanted. And isn't that what it's all about when you talk about people putting the criteria for what they think is one of the best pay-per-views ever? That is the criteria. Did you give me what I wanted as a fan, and did you deliver on the promises that you set out to deliver on? Those two, The answer to those two questions, I think for a lot of people, the majority of the people is yes. Like, And if that is, again, the case for a, a particular wrestling fan, then it makes complete sense why they would look at it and say, this may actually be one of the best pay-per-views I've ever seen. Now, it's going to differ from age, right? Like there could be people that go back to, to Great American Bash 89, like we said, whether it's WrestleMania 17, different eras, depending on your fandom, you're going to have a different opinion. There are going to be people that probably, you know, grew up in the 80s thinking, you know, maybe there's certain shows, Great American Bash 89 is one people always look back to, uh, WrestleMania 17, like I said, that's another one that a lot of people will point to uh, as sort of the gold standard. Uh, but in this era, with this, with the state of professional wrestling as it is right now, I don't think there's any doubt you can look at this and say, even with knowing that we're all going to have a little recency bias sometimes, this pay-per-view could be one of the most significant ones because of the precedent that it sets with an active main event player in WWE Brian Danielson, who just made event at the most recent WrestleMania. He's won a WrestleMania main event before, WrestleMania 30. He actively chooses to leave WWE, come to AEW. You get that on this pay-per-view. But you also get Adam Cole, who's been the face of NXT for years. One of the top stars in that brand actively chooses to leave WWE, come to AEW. He's on this pay-per-view. And then, like we said, Minoru Suzuki, an absolute legend when it comes to uh, New Japan. He's on this pay-per-view. Ruby Soho, someone people had a, a groundswell of support behind her. One, she was so underutilized in WWE, something I've talked about before in a couple of articles I did on 41mania.com. Very underutilized. She comes in, there's another one. Like, that gives you what you want, too. And then for the matches themselves, we could spend, you know, five minutes, ten minutes on every single match, but all the matches delivered what I thought they were going to be. And that is from top to bottom, if you can put all of that into a pay-per-view, you're doing pretty well, and that's why AEW now has all of this momentum. That's why we're having these discussions of, was this one of the best pay-per-views of all time? Um, everything will always be subjective on that. Everyone will rate di things differently, but if you're looking at it in the context of what this could mean in terms of significance, right now with the wrestling industry and the landscape, um, you could put this card up, I think, against a lot of cards <laughs> in the in the history of professional wrestling. Uh, even if, again, the viewership is not where it used to be in the Attitude Era, buy rates, all that, we're not comparing that ne necessarily. We're, we're comparing absolute enjoyment, delivering on what you set out to deliver, and if all of that is going to play in your criteria for what you consider one of the best pay-per-views ever, I am not going to you know try to push anyone away from that and say, you're wrong. Uh, it's not, you know, WrestleMania 17, on and on and on. No, like I, I can I can 100% understand why people view this perhaps as one of the best shows they've ever seen. I'm sure if the, the live experience, the atmosphere was incredible. That really helped too, I think. That is one of the aspects I think we're always going to talk about with this show. Incredible atmosphere and just, um, it had everything. Uh, it had everything you wanted and we spent this whole time talking about, like, CM Punk made his in-ring return here. And think about all the other things that you had on this pay-per-view coming out of it. Like, Brian Danielson, Adam Cole. Like, we talked about all this, but the big sell going in was CM Punk's in-ring debut in AEW, his big return, and that delivered. Like, they had a really good match. Uh, and I talked about that on the most recent episode of the 411 on Wrestling Podcast. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. Listen to that, where I talked all about that match 
and then Brian Danielson, Adam Cole uh, debuts. And uh, we will get more into a lot of this stuff coming out of AEW All Out. There's a lot of stuff to get to, and we'll have more reaction videos on that here uh, coming soon on the 411 Made a YouTube channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, like, share, all that good stuff. And uh, we will be back with more uh, reaction from AW All Out.